Hi everyone, Jim here for Mystery and Mayhem. Today we're going to talk about our top 10 reads for the Read What You Own Challenge. Now, my issue wasn't um, not having enough to choose. It was having too many to choose. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do 50 uh, for the Read What You Own Challenge. And <clears throat> the rate I've been going, I'm not, not real sure I'll make 50. I, I really have to ramp it up if I want to make 50 books by the beginning of April. I really, I, I mean, when I have the chance to sit and read, I can read quickly. But uh, I just haven't been sitting and reading like I should, and I, I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to remedy that. But uh, yeah, I've I scoured my bookshelves uh, looking for ten books that I really, really want to read that are priority for me. And this time, I concentrated on standalone books. I didn't want to do do series books for these top ten like I did in my prior videos. I'm not even sure I'll do those series. I mean, I mean I've mean, i done videos on them, so yeah, I'll do my best to do them. And uh, But I wanted to focus on standalone books this time. So, and these are in no particular order. These are just books that I've had on my shelf for a while, except for one that I got recently and I've been wanting to get to for a long time. So let's get to it. Now, I have a lot of vintage paperbacks on my bookshelves. I mean, I've been, I've been collecting them for years, and I have a lot. And I want to read most of them, but I, I narrowed it down to, uh, to a couple on here. So the first one is short stories by W. Somerset Maugham called Ah King. And I will give you the titles of the stories that are in this book. Oh, it's... Uh, there's writing in there. Albert Atkins, Sunday, January 7th, 1979. This actual volume is from 1958. It's a Berkeley edition. And the stories in here, the contents, uh, the title story, Ah King, uh, and six more stories called Footprints in the Jungle, The Door of Opportunity, The Vessel of Wrath, The Book Bag, The Back of Beyond, and Neil McAdam. So that's a lovely Robert McGinnis cover. He's, uh, he's right, I'm uh, sorry, not McGinnis. I meant to say Robert McGuire. Um, he's right up there with Robert McGinnis. He's just uh, an amazing cover artist. And uh, yeah, that's a beautiful cover right there. So that's, that's number one. Number two is the recent one I picked up on one of my recent book calls called The Atrocity by Jackson Burgess. And uh, when I picked this up, I was really anxious to read this one. So this is going to be in my top 10. It's a World War II story. And uh, the atrocity is referring to um, the, uh, the mistreatment of, uh, of, uh, of an Italian girl by um, Allied soldiers in the Second World War after the, world was o uh, the, the war was over. And uh, they, uh, a lot of the soldiers didn't behave very well while they were over there. And uh, this novel deals with that, and uh, it just looks like it's going to be a really good read. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And it's a nice short one too, so that should go, that should go fairly quick. <clears throat> Next on the list, Superman: The Last Son of Krypton by Elliot S. Megan. Now he, Elliot S. Megan, was. Uh, a writer in the, for the Superman comics for many, many years. And uh, this was a no, not really a novelization of the, of the movie, but it, it uh, coincided with the release of the Superman movie, which in my opinion is still the best superhero movie out there, bar none as the original Superman, the movie with Christopher Reeve. So this is a book I've had for a long time and I've been meaning to read, and I'm really looking forward to it. There's... Christopher Reeve on the cover, looking all heroic, and that's the way Superman should be. And uh, yeah, and there's pictures inside from the movie. There's Marlon Brando, Jor-El. 
yeah, just uh, in really good shape, which I'm happy about. Next on the list, Seven Lies South by William P. McGivern. Vintage paperback from, uh, it's a Crest book. And uh, this one is from 1961. The original printing was 1960. And uh, yeah, this just looks intriguing. And uh, everything I've heard about William P. McGivern, he's a fairly decent writer. And that's uh, one of those beautiful vintage covers that you saw on so many of those paperbacks back in the day. Looking forward to that. Next one. Very cool. The Jewel of Seven Stars by Bram Stoker. Now, a lot of his other fiction, apart from Dracula, really isn't that well known and probably isn't as good, to be honest, as Dracula. But um, this is an eerie story of possession and reincarnation that is the basis for the blood-curdling films Blood from the Mummy's Tomb and The Awakening. So... And this was selected by Stephen Jones and Kim Newman as one of the 100 best horror books, I'm assuming, of all time. So that's, that's on my list. And uh, I'm sure I'll enjoy that. That's from um, 1989, that particular one. Now, a Pyramid Adventure classic, Captain Blood by Raphael Sabatini. Another one that's been on my list, meaning to read for a long time. Um, very cool pirate cover there. I, I'm always into pirates. I love pirate adventure and pirate stories. So that's um, Captain Peter Blood's name struck terror throughout the Caribbean from Jamaica to Maracaibo. Men dreaded to see the sails of his fleet come over the horizon, knowing that battle and plunder were the sure fate of any swift ships caught. <clears throat> But Captain Blood was more than a pirate. Exiled for an act of mercy, he had turned savage. He had waited the chance to serve his country. And when that chance came, Peter Blood needed all his courage and pirate skill to take it. For terrible death and final disgrace faced him if he failed. And Captain Blood, Raphael Sabatini, is described as a modern Dumas. So, yeah, looking forward to that book. It's a little worse for wear, but still readable. <coughs> Next one by a famous author, Elmore Leonard, Ombre. One of his, uh, that's a, a famous Western of his. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's an old paperback copy of Ballantine Western from uh, 1974, this edition. And I think uh, you remember that uh, the movie Ombre with Paul Newman, I believe, was based on this book. So that is number... That's number seven on my list. <clears throat> the next one is a hard case crime novel by Stephen King called Joyland. Now, I didn't get this when it first came out, and I kind of regretted it because once it was gone, I couldn't find it anywhere. And I was uh, lucky enough to find this at a used bookstore. And uh, yeah, so Stephen King Joyland, I, I hear it's pretty good. And he's, he has a good relationship with the hard case crime folks. He's done a few for them. And uh, I think this what might have been the first one he did for them. I'm not too sure. I don't remember. I don't recall offhand. But uh, wonderful Glenn Orbeck cover, which he did a lot of the hard case crime covers. And I don't have all of the hard case crime books. I have about maybe 30 of them. I wish I had more. But, uh, yeah, very, very cool. Looking forward to that one. <clears throat> now, the next is a hardcover. Donald E. Westlake, The Axe. And I've had this one on my shelf for a while. And, and Westlake is just uh, one of those writers that is just, like, brilliant. I mean, whatever he does is just uh, is just gold to read, honestly. I mean, uh, I, I started reading his uh, Parker character. He was writing as Richard Stark. And uh, that's how I got to know Donald E. Westlake. And uh, a master of the form. When I say master of the form, I'm not exaggerating at all. Donald E. Westlake. So this is a standalone novel, not part of a series, and I'm looking very forward to reading that, and this hardcover is just in great shape. And this is uh, this is a mysterious press book.
from uh, its first printing from 1997. So I'm happy to happy to have that one. Last but not least, what would a top ten list be without a Sherlock Holmes novel? The Shadow of Reichenbach Falls by John R. King. And there's Holmes and Moriarty going over the Reichenbach Falls. And in this one, actually, he meets up with uh, Karnacki of uh, uh, Ghostfinder fame by William Hope, Hope Hodgson. Uh, Reichenbach Falls, the infamous site of the battle to the death between Sherlock Holmes and his arch nemesis, Professor Moriarty. For years, readers have had two conflicting tales of what happened on that fateful day. In the first, the great detective met his demise, and in the second, he escaped and went into hiding. What if the truth lies in a third account? And it goes on. But, uh, yeah, nice, beautiful hardcover from Forge Books, uh, Tom Doherty Associates. And that is from... 2008. So, yeah, that's uh, those are my top 10 books for the Read What You Own Challenge. Um, yeah, for, for what it is, hopefully uh, you find some of those interesting. And let me know if you guys read any of these books or if you're, uh, if you, if you're interested in any of them. And uh, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Keep reading.